reacting to Sarah Boone's police cruiser interview. And I believe this was the same day that she reported her boyfriend, George Torres, as dead to the police. So we'll listen to this and react to it. This is Sarah's interview in the police cruiser and corresponding investigative report. Today's date is February 24th, 2020. The time now is approximately 16.57 hours. This is in reference to Orange County case number 20 dash 017904. I'm currently located in my unmarked vehicle um, out in front of 4748 France Lane, apartment number three in Winter Park um, at the Tealwood Park Apartments. And also in the car with me is my partner. Detective Scott Lowen. And um, in the front seat is, can you state your name, ma'am? Sarah Ben. Okay, and your birthday? 101077. Okay. <clears throat> so, Sarah, I know you have talked to some deputies. I know we had a very brief conversation um, just to reiterate what you told that deputy. Um, but like I was explaining, I would like to get a more further um, understanding of what happened last night and ask you more detailed questions. Um, I am going to read you um, your rights but it's just because that's how we do things, okay? Um, so you do have the right to remain silent, okay? Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Anything you say may be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer before and during questioning without charge. If you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, one can be provided for you before questioning without charge. Has anyone threatened you or promised you anything to get you to talk to me? No. Do you understand what I just read you? Yes. Okay. So... Last night, you said that you and your boyfriend, George, were here at your residence and didn't really leave that day. You said that he went to the store to buy cigarettes. Yes. What time was that around? <coughs> if you recall. Was it light out still? Dark out? Yes, it was light out still. It was still light out. Okay. Um, but he's the only person that left and he came back? Yes. I'm assuming? Okay. Um, it's right down the street. It's down the street. Okay. And um, tell me what, what you guys were doing next. Like, what what was happening? We had a bottle of wine. <clears throat> we painted. We drew. We did puzzles. Do you remember what wine you guys were drinking? Um, it's, what is what <coughs> Chardonnay. Okay. The bottles are in the trash. Okay. All right. Sarah said, the bottles are in the trash. So, earlier, she said they had a bottle of wine. Basically, every time she's told the story, it's been a bottle of wine. Even though there were two receipts for two separate bottle, bottles of wine on the same day. The same day that George got put into the suitcase. And both of those empty bottles were in the trash can. So she has, you know, in every other interview that I've heard, she said they only had one bottle of wine. But here she said the bottles, with an S on the end, plural, are in the trash. Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you remember around, like, what time this was that you guys were sh sharing the bottle of wine, painting, mm. doing puzzles? I'm going to say uh, four-ish. Okay. And was this before he went to the store or after? I'm sorry? Had he already gotten home from the store at this point to buy the cigarettes? Yes. Okay. So it was around 4 p.m. Ish. That you realized and you guys were doing puzzles and art. Okay. Listening to music, enjoying each other's company. And all the... She said that they were enjoying each other's company. Now, I think most of us have heard, seen, and heard the videos that Sarah took that night that she had George zipped up in her suitcase, and he did not seem to be enjoying her company. He was begging her to let him out of her suitcase because he could not breathe. So why is she talking for him and saying that they were enjoying each other's company because clearly he was not enjoying anything. Stare 
stairs, upstairs? Where did you downstairs. guys? Downstairs. Okay. Um, we usually sit on the back porch because we smoke. You know, a lot of smoke inside, so. Okay. Um, and who was here last night? Was it just the two of you? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah? Okay. Back to her saying that they're not allowed to smoke inside. Okay, well, that may be actually a rule, but I doubt it. Because we saw in the earlier videos, you know, when she called the police on George when he was alive, that she came running out of the home with a cigarette lit in her hand, doing some kind of jump, like a jumping for joy. And she had the lit cigarette in her hand while she was inside this apartment. So, I seriously, I think that's just another lie. No one ever came over at any point? No. No? Okay. We called his daughters on FaceTime. <laughs> okay. Uh, we were just literally just enjoying one another's company. Okay. And you guys share the phone that you have, yes. correct? Um, okay. And the phone's located in there, I think, in the yes. kitchen area? Yeah. Okay. Um, so tell me what happens next. You're painting, you're, you guys are doing this puzzle together, you obviously finished the bottle of bottle of wine yes um did you have one or two bottles of wine well we had one previously that was maybe not even half full okay but then <clears throat> so you finished that one and then you had the full one yes okay dang it you know i wish the detective lady would have nailed sarah down on when previously had you had the first bottle of wine because I'm sure it was just minutes before they had the second one. And, you know, I'm saying the word they having the bottle of wine uh, kind of like I really believe Sarah had more wine than George. I know his autopsy did uh, state that he was intoxicated with alcohol. So I do believe he had some wine. He just doesn't sound like in the in the videos that Sarah recorded that night, that he was as intoxicated as Sarah was that night. And sorry, what was the question? Uh, just what did you guys do next after the bottle of wine? Like after you well, we finished had, the wine? We had the bottle of wine while we were <coughs> having doing our arts and crafts. Mm -hmm. And from there, just we didn't. We were puzzled out. We were painted out. Mm -hmm. So. Being silly, let's play hide and seek, which we had played before. Like, I don't know if you've opened the door on the top of the stairwell. Like, he and I have hidden in there before. Like, just having fun and enjoying each other's company. Okay. So, I mean, that's literally all it was. And then the suitcase is... Okay, again, I'm, I keep going back to this where she's describing that they were enjoying each other's company. Um... The neighbor that lived directly next to George and Sarah reported that they were fighting at the top of their lungs that night. It, extremely loud. He could hear them through the apartment walls. And then there was a loud crash, like something falling or being thrown down the stairs. And it was so loud. And it physically shook the wall between their two apartments. So, I don't think the neighbor would agree with Sarah either that George was enjoying Sarah's company. Stairs, because I was telling you, we were getting ready to do donations. Mm -hmm. And because it's not a very good suitcase, the... What was the question? I'm sorry. You were just explaining to me the night... Oh, he decided to hide in there. So, being silly, he and I, I mean, were sitting there laughing at it, like, with him in there. And then, so I didn't zip it up all the way, but, I mean, enough to where his little fingers were out there and whatever, but still having a good time and whatever. Then, I guess I decided to go upstairs, and I don't know... If Okay, so she said that she did not zip the suitcase up all the way and he had his two little fingers sticking out. Now, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe he had his fingers sticking out. And if, if he did, then she probably stuffed them back in there and then zipped it up all the way. 
because if he had his fingers sticking out, he could have unzipped the suitcase. And he could have also had oxygen to come through that hole where he had his fingers sticking out and unzip the suitcase. So I don't believe her that he had his fingers sticking out for any length of time anyway. I fell asleep. So I woke up this morning and again thought he was downstairs on the laptop looking for a job as he usually is and then thought where is he is he on the back porch is he in the bathroom like where is he and then i came to about the suitcase so i opened the suitcase i took him out stretched him out started to do cpr where air was coming out, but, and then like whatever gurgle. Like, he made, so I'm trying to do CPR on him. Mm -hmm. I'm shaking him, trying to get him to come too, but I could tell by looking at him, something was wrong. He's been losing his teeth lately. And Okay, to me, that's a clue. I bet there's going to be something that comes out in evidence in her trial that showed that he was actually uh, physically attacked in the mouth area. And so she's trying to explain this physical attack away by saying he's been losing his teeth lately. Okay, so that's very unusual. Like, why would someone just lose their teeth unless they've been hit in the mouth? And, you know, I, I also remember a baseball bat being asked about by the detectives. So I think it could have been that she hit him in the mouth with a baseball teeth, um, baseball teeth, baseball bat. And she knew that it knocked his teeth out. I, I mean, I'm speculating here, but, you know, I'm just kind of connecting the dots. Okay. She's saying that he's losing teeth. And the investigators were asking about a baseball bat. And I believe they even collected it as evidence. So, um, you know, prediction-wise, just I predict that something will come out in the evidence in the trial proving that. Has been complaining about his chest hurts, which is why I keep trying to get him to go to the doctor. But because he... Okay, there's another clue. Um, he's been complaining that his chest hurts. So it, it's probably um, chest what, heart problems that caused him to die. Not anything that I did. So just planting that little seed here. He's been complaining about chest pain. Nor I have a job or insurance has been putting it off. Mm -hmm. So again... So I didn't know what to do, so I called Brian, my ex-husband. I called him. He right here, I really wish the detective would have asked her, have you ever called 911 before in case, you know, in cases of emergencies or for any reason? And of course she would have said, yeah, yeah, I've called 911 many times. And then the detective should have asked her, I would have liked them to ask her, well, how come you didn't know to call 911 first? This time, when you've done it so many times before, how is it you don't know what to do this time? What's going on? Over. Just walked in and then walked out. I grabbed my phone and I called you guys. From there, here we are. Okay. The first time you woke up this morning, did you look at your phone to see what time it was? No. Okay. Most of the time, like, I'll wake up. But because he nor I have a job, I'll usually just lay in the bed for a little bit longer because the house is clean. There's nothing else that we can do. Okay, I really love this lie. The house is clean. And she tells this story over and over and over. Well, story as in lie, over and over. Now, we've seen the videos from that night where Sarah has George zipped in her suitcase in the living room floor. And we can see there's nothing clean about that floor. So that's a blatant lie. Me thinking 
thinking he's on the laptop looking for jobs, I can't use a laptop. So most of the time I'll just stay in the bed and collect my thoughts and get ready for the day. I can't take the credit for it, but someone else pointed out that she said here, I can't use a laptop. But when she goes to jail, you know, her number one, one of her number one, she has so many requests is that she needs a laptop. So she has access to her discovery or her evidence for her trial. So do you have any idea what time you woke up that first time? What time it may have been? I don't know if you guys have a I'm going to say 11 something. 11 okay. something. Okay. Maybe. Is that when you finally got up or is that the first time you woke up? No, that's the time that I decided to get up because I figured he was downstairs on the laptop. So right. let him look for jobs on the laptop and then it usually I'll clean, he'll look for jobs or vice versa where I'll look for jobs and he'll clean. Okay. So you think you got out of bed after 11 at some point? Yes. Okay. But we can't recall which time. Do you think you were up for like hours before that or no. collecting your thoughts? Brian, <coughs> because I was supposed to have my son today to okay. pick him up from school, Brian usually calls to make sure, hey, are you sure you're getting Lucas today? Mm -hmm. Because I've had job interviews. Right. Are you going to pick up Lucas? So after he called like maybe three, four times, maybe five. Okay, so there's a contradiction between Sarah and Brian's stories. Sarah said that um, sometimes she's not able to pick up her son because she's got job interviews, but her former husband, Brian Boone, says that Sarah is not able to pick up their son, Lucas, because she's drunk most of the time. Um, I finally answered, and that's... Like, do you think you were sleeping and missed those calls? No, I ignored them. You ignored them. Because okay. he's notorious for blowing up my phone. Okay. But I understand why, because he's making sure that Lucas gets home. Right, yeah, okay. And to do whatever he needs to do day-wise so he can schedule around it. Were you upstairs in your room at that time when you were ignoring those phone calls? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we're not really sure what time you woke up initially, but you... We're upstairs collecting your thoughts. You figured he was on the laptop downstairs, so you were just getting ready for your day. Yes. You finally got out of bed at sometime after 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. and had gone downstairs. Yes. Okay. Looking and for him. and was Couldn't find him. You looked outside, couldn't find him anywhere. And he wasn't then you in got... the bathroom. I was right. thinking maybe he's in the bathroom. But then I came to and, and ran then you... the suitcase. And then you and then you called Brian. Yes. Um, he told came him over. To come over. Yes, he came he over. Lives down the road, right? Not very far. Um, he came over, walked in, basically walked out. You called nine one one. Yes, I had my phone in my hand. I just wanted to wait for him to get there because I didn't know what to do. Right. Okay. Um. And then we arrived. Like I couldn't. I still, to the, I don't, I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know what happened, but, like, my whole thing is, the whole, like, teeth losing thing, and I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know what happened. There's another clue about the teeth. You know, again, I'm going to predict that something's going to come out in evidence that, he probably had injuries to his mouth from the from this night from their i mean i speculate is from them fighting or sarah attacking him with the baseball bat i don't know what I, he and i were having an amazing time yesterday like we normally do no arguments no. no nothing okay and the thing with him though is which is why we've been doing puzzles and artwork lately is the and you heard that she said, the detective said, no, no arguments. And Sarah said, no, but you know, why was he physically, why was George physically attacked and had so many physical injuries on him? And why did the neighbors say that they were yelling and arguing and fighting that night? He's been 
stressing about a job, of course. Of course. Which we've talked about. So what I did was start having him do puzzles and artwork to keep... Okay, those words right there. She said that I had him start doing puzzles and artwork. What do you mean you had him do that? I mean, is he not, was he not a free person? Why did you have him do anything? Why didn't you allow him to do what he wanted to do? Which I doubt any grown person is going to be wanting to do puzzles or artwork with Sarah Boone. Mind off of it. Okay. His ex-wife is all over him about sending money, which mm -hmm. he can't do because he doesn't have a job. Right. So he was stressing about that. He's been stressing about the job. But that's why I started to buy puzzles and paint to get his mind off of them, which is what we, I don't know if you noticed on the wall in there, it's all of our artwork and stuff. Okay. So I don't. Oh, yeah, Sarah, we noticed your artwork on the wall in George's um, inside, the, inside your suitcase videos from that night when you were drunk videotaping him. And um, your artwork leaves a lot to be desired. <coughs> I mean, music, art, and playing with the dogs, dancing around the room with the dogs. I, and then decided to play hide and seek. Because we're always trying to outdo each other on where we can find, we can hide the best. How often do you guys play hide and seek? Gosh, that was... Maybe, what, the third time? Maybe. Okay. Okay, so if you've only played hide-and-seek with each other for three times, how are you always trying to outdo each other and see who can hide the best? Those two are conflicting. Okay, is it always or was it only three times? Is it a more recent game you've gotten into or three times the total in your relationship you're talking about? Um, lately. Lately. Because, again, like, we were puzzled out, but we painted already, so why not? So you were downstairs hanging out. Um, do you remember around what time you guys started playing hide-and-seek? <coughs> Get a cop job. Honestly, I don't. I... Do you remember if it was dark out? Yeah, it was dark. Okay. It was dark. But my thing is, is like when I spend time with him and I've kind of, I try to get him to start doing it, it, I don't look at the clock. Okay. I just, I'm here with him and mm -hmm. we're having a good time. I don't need to know what time it is. Right. I didn't know if you were like on your phone, if you got a text message, if you got a phone call last night. We called his daughters <laughs> yesterday, FaceTime. Right. What time was that at? I don't know without looking at my phone. Okay. But I ended up, was that the would that be the only activity that you had yesterday on your phone? I called Lucas. I talked to Lucas. He's my son. Okay. At I night, always call him. Morning. Mm -hmm. No, it was evening. Evening. Okay. But I'm just trying to help you like um, remember a, like something you did right before hide and seek that would help you re remember a time or give us a good time frame because that's important for you know us to know. You want to be able to tell the doctors that? I don't know, to be honest with you. Okay. <clears throat> so, when you called your... When you called Lucas, was it before or after hide-and-seek? Before. Okay. And when you called and FaceTime um, his daughters, daughters. before or after hide-and-seek? Before. Okay. And did you call the daughters first and then Lucas, or Lucas first and then the daughters? I... I know I talked to Lucas... But then we talked to the daughters afterwards. After. Okay. Okay. And I don't remember if she called us. No, I know he called Cookie. But yes, he, we called her. What are the two daughters' names? Or just one? Did you say one he daughter? He has three two? children. It's Anna, Cookie, what her real name is Destiny. And then he has a handicapped son, George. Georgie. Okay. Who did you call, though, yesterday? Who did he call? Cookie. And what is Cookie's real name? Destiny. Does she have his last name or some, something else? It's Torres. Because she remarried, but I don't know her last name. Okay. Um, okay.
Okay, so you know it's dark out, but you're not really sure what time it is. You play hide and seek. How long do you guys play hide and seek before he decides to get into the suitcase? Oof. Wasn't... Approximate. Wasn't really... I hid upstairs in the shower. Mm Mm-hmm. And then... Came downstairs because I was tired of hanging out in the shower. Okay. So... (laughs) That part cracks me up. She came downstairs because she was tired of hanging out in the shower. So, obviously, George didn't find her. And she sounds like she's um, ups- angry about that. Like, hey, you didn't come and look for me. And I spent all that time in the shower, you jerk. That's when he was playing around in the suitcase. So, okay. Because I, we both thought it was funny. That. Oh, yeah. oh yeah well I'm gonna zip you up uh huh you didn't come look for me so could that be motive right there they're playing hide and seek she was upstairs hiding in the shower and he didn't come look for her instead he was downstairs downstairs you know she says that he was downstairs playing around in the suitcase uh. That doesn't make sense. I don't believe that the suitcase was downstairs, but that's what she said. So, again, it's a broken suitcase, but... What do you mean by broken? It's only got one of these. But because Uh, I didn't zip it up all the way, he was doing the... You mean it doesn't have, like, the pull part? Correct. Okay, but it's got... No, it's got a... I think it's got a... What do you call it? A paper clip. Okay. So the zipper to it is missing. Like the actual zipper that attaches to it to help you open and close is missing. But you think a paper clip was on it instead? There is a paper. I believe there's a paper clip on it because I know that the last time. That's what you used to like help assist you? Well, or you can just (laughs) stick your fingers in there and unzip it it yourself, which is why I did not zip it up all the way. Okay. So how much did you zip it up? Okay, I don't understand what she's saying there. That um, there's a paper clip or you can put your fingers in there to unzip the suitcase. And that's why she didn't zip it up all the way. I don't understand that at all. You didn't unzip it because you can put your... Okay, you didn't zip it all the way because you can unzip it with your fingers. I don't understand. I'm trying to make it make sense. So, since George could unzip it with his fingers, she didn't zip it all the way. That way he could put his fingers up there, unzip it, and get out. Mm -hmm. Why didn't he do it then, if he could? I mean... Really you said his finger, he was, a, his fingers were able to stick out? Yeah, two, two fingers. fingers. Okay. Yeah, so I'm figuring he, he'll, he'll get it, he'll get it. But then I wanted to go upstairs and waited for him. And eventually, I guess I fell asleep. I had the dogs in the bed with me, was warm, and then fell asleep. So you guys are joking. He's in there. Um, you said you could see two of his fingers? Yes. And then, <clears throat> like, you just decided, okay, I'm going to go upstairs now? Or Because I figured he would get out and then go upstairs and have intimate relations like we normally do. Mm-hmm. But Okay, here's another time where I think she's trying to explain his injuries. So... She's saying that they were they normally have intimate relations, and I think she's trying to explain away the uh, scratch marks that he has on his back, saying, oh, yeah, well, since we normally have intimate relations every night, and during those intimate relations, I scratch his back, so that's going to explain why he's got injuries to his back, but... 
her ex, no, not ex, former husband, Brian Boone, said that she was always using her claws on him when she would physically attack her former husband, Brian. So, I seriously doubt that intimate relations were part of the injuries that were on George's back. Fell asleep. No crime. And he never came upstairs. So, again, I'm thinking he's downstairs on the laptop earlier today. Okay. And then remembered. Okay. So, is this something that you... Do you guys play hide-and-seek before you have sexual intercourse? Or do you guys just play hide-and-seek because you're bored and you're just trying to pass time and it's fun? We were... Yeah, we were... Again, puzzled out. Can't paint anymore. Even started to purge some of the art that's on the, the wall now. So so we're talking about Sunday? And then into why Friday. I'm thoroughly confused because <clears throat> we had a good time mm -hmm. sitting on the back porch having wine and smoking a couple of cigarettes and then decided to go inside and literally paint, do puzzles, and play. Mm -hmm. And listen to music. That's why nobody got out of sorts. That's Again, I think that's another clue. When she said nobody got out of sorts, I believe that someone did get out of sorts, and I think it was her. And that's what the neighbors reported, hearing them out of sorts arguing with each other. Mind-blowing to me. Like, I don't, okay. I have no clue. Nobody laid a hand on anybody. Okay, and I do believe that part. She said nobody laid a hand on anybody. And I I think that she's actually telling the truth that she did not lay her hands on him. Well, I don't know. With him having fresh scratch marks, I guess at least her fingernails of her hands would have had to be on him. But I really think that... Um, you know, he got most of his injuries, this is my speculating, is that he got most of his injuries from her hitting him with a baseball bat, possibly, you know. And also, if the suitcase was upstairs when George got into it and Sarah put him in the suitcase and then threw the suitcase with him in it down the stairs, that would explain why the neighbor reported the wall shaking when it was hit. And I think that's probably where he got some of his physical injuries. So, yeah, I don't believe that he got most of his injuries from her laying her hands on him. I think it was a weapon and or going down the stairs inside the suitcase. Okay, so that was the end of building your online. That was the end of that of that video about the police cruiser interview that Sarah gave. And we are going to do the the police cruiser interview with former husband Brian Boone and also the detective's interview with the property manager. So I hope I don't forget to mention that the fellow tenants over at the apartment complex where George and Sarah lived gave Sarah the nickname of Drunk the Bear. I'm pretty sure that's what she says, but, you know, I'm thinking, how lame is that nickname? Those people really need to work on their nicknames. <laughs> I mean, I could go with Drunky Bear, but Drunk the Bear, I don't know. That's just weird to me. But, okay, I want to give my prediction of how this trial will go. I believe that Sarah will be found guilty. I believe she's accused of second degree murder. So uh, my prediction is that she will be found guilty. And uh, I'm pretty sure she will get life in prison. But that's my prediction. It seemed like I had another prediction, but I can't remember it now. I had to write it down. But that's the end of this video.